Yes. And it's a grazing lay, and because it's fairly close to the yard or the farmyard, its prim primary use is for dairy cow grazing um, after a first cut silage. Um, normally, the, the system we adopt is that any grass that's established in the autumn would be cut with first cut for foot to begin with uh, to make silage, and then grazing introduced when the the soil surface is slightly better for the cows to, to walk on and graze it. And the type of grass lay that we have is a medium to uh, long term lay with quite a lot of clover in it. And um, the whole emphasis on this is uh, for grazing rather than silage cutting. And uh, because it's cut for silage and we need quite a lot of conserved forage, it does get a lot of traffic on it um, when we're doing silage. So, um, and most of the equipment is fairly large. Most of our trailers would be um, kind of 12 ton gross weight. Um, they do have flotation tyres on them but um, you know if it's a wet time when we're making silage it's virtually impossible not to, to create compaction and I guess uh, in a lot of the circumstances with temporary layers it's, uh, it's an issue with, with compaction. four inches down, but it's a horizontal crack, which is not just down to, you see how the roots are going along that crack there, look, quite a bit of rooting but also sort of residue I think, in that layer, so quite quite a distinct, uh, what we call sort of discontinuity in that uh, bit of topsoil there. So roots going down to that layer and then sort of running along this crack. So if we look at this as our sort of poorer layer. If you're assessing that, you can see it breaks, it's pretty stiff, okay, it's dry, it's not the ideal conditions to be assessing it, but it's a pretty stiff break up, you need both hands to do it. And it's very angular, not many roots in there. Um, See how the roots are running on the top of that layer. Not many roots running through it. Very little porosity. Um, so I think this is a sort of layer where you'd probably want, be wanting to get underneath it, get a tine about each an inch under the layer to lift it and shatter it, and try and get some more sort of horizontal cracks running through that sort of compacted layer. That's quite a good example. We're, on, we're quite close to the headland here, so this is probably not typical of the rest of the field. But it'd be somewhere where you might want to look to sort of get a handle of what compaction looks like. So here we've got yeah, about 8 inches, 20 centimetres, so that's almost all the topsoil. Use the tape measure I can always use the side of our assessment sheet to measure up. If we break this up, um, first thing to do, once we've got the spit out, is to open the whole thing up like a book, if we can. See if we can pick out any sort of distinct layers as you think might be limiting. And again, this lower layer here is coming out as a single block. There. So that's that's our layer, that's our sort of distant layer really. It's quite dry, so it's going to be difficult to break up. And break it up with the hand. Look where the roots are, see how porous it is size of earthworms in terms of earthworm channels, the roots going through the pores or between the pores. Compare what we've got with the descriptions and the pictures on the back of the sheet. So there, most of our aggregates are pretty angular, most of them are. And we've got roots mainly between the aggregates, a few through the aggregates as well. 
be able to see that roots running through the, the aggregates. So this is um, this is sort of three, probably into four. Um, see, most of our aggregates are quite large. We sort of say here, large, greater than five centimeters. We're into that sort of category the way it's breaking up. So this 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 is a, a soil where you might want to consider use of a sward lifter. Uh, you'd certainly expect improvements in soil drainage from sward lifting this, even if you didn't see yield increases. So improvements in soil drainage, that imply possibly more grazing days in the spring and the autumn, uh, better infiltration of, of rainfall and slurry, um, and less surface runoff, so lower flood risk as well. So the land should be easy to manage if it's better structured, more vertical fissures through the soil. Infiltrate better, but uh, better, marginally better than on the headland. So we looked on the headland first to get a good feel for what compaction looks like. And now we've come to the middle of the field. You can see we've still got a, li a limiting layer, so a, a compacted layer um, with angular aggregates. Probably not as bad as on the headland, but you would, you could still think about. Uh, perhaps we lifting this.